Buenos días, mis amigos. Buenos días. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a good time to be alive. Right. Um, I have some sad news that I feel like I need to talk about, and that's the loss of, of Cameron. Cameron was a young man. And uh, now he's gone, just like that. And it's, it's hard to understand these things. My, my guess is that he was probably ill for a while. We didn't know about it. Probably a lot of folks didn't know about it because I think Cameron, in some ways, was a very private guy. Right. And um, I'm just really sad about him because they're good guys. Cameron was. Yes. And, uh, you know, today, a beautiful day like today is a good day to remember the good things about Cameron and Wes, their relationship, which I believe is an example. Um, just really sad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still getting over COVID. I didn't know I was still getting over COVID. And then uh, suddenly I started not feeling really good. And uh, then I realized that I really wasn't over COVID entirely. Uh, worse than that, my wife is not over COVID entirely. So we've been kind of bouncing off of each other's remaining illness. We're not infectious, but we're still dragging. COVID does that. And I guess the older you are, uh, which has nothing to do with me, of course, the, <laughs> the harder time you have with, with COVID. And I'm, I'm an example of that. And I just wanted to let you know if it looks like I'm dragging, and I probably am a little bit. Um, do you know, it's been a strange year for me. Uh, it's been a strange year for a lot of us. There's been a lot of illness. Now, I haven't said that. COVID is out there. People are getting COVID right and left, folks. Right and left. The surge is on, and nobody's talking about it because nobody wants to go back to wearing masks and taking precautions. And I'm not going to tell you that we need to shut down St. Louis, but I think people need to be educated in how they deal with COVID. You can get infected more than one time with COVID. Mm -hmm. I was in a, a line yesterday at Food City. There's a lady there with the mask on and she was coughing. She couldn't control her coughing. And I, I finally said, look, here's my money. I'm gone. I mean, I'm not going to stand in line with somebody coughing when I just got over COVID. And it was kind of sad because I could tell she didn't really want to be there. But the pressure is on folks to act normal no matter what. The pressure is on you to act normal no matter what. Even if it kills you, the pressure is still out there. You know? So do what you need to do. You see, I'm wearing a mask. A lot of, lot of you are. And I think it's still, a, a, at least I feel safer wearing a mask. And I feel like I'm keeping you safer by wearing a mask. So I'm going to keep wearing the mask. Uh, Labor Day. How many of you watched football yesterday? Did anybody? Mm -hmm. Did you? You know, all the games were for garbage. <laughs> they were. You know, all the all, all the SEC games were lopsided in the direction of Alabama University. Of it wasn't a fun Saturday football day. We'll see what happens next Saturday. They're all openers. That's the point, isn't it? That's the point. They're paying a lot to move. I've watched them anyway. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna be doing some stuff around Labor Day and Gail, would you come up? And Gail's got a special prayer that has to do with these things, and she has a great share with us. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. So before I do that, uh, just a couple of other things. One is that.
Next week, I will be doing an instructed Eucharist, and I can mention if you have questions and you want me to work into that, I'd love to build it around with your questions. If not, I have other things to build it around, but I've only received one question from somebody, so there's several ways you can do it. I, uh, Nancy, I believe, sent out the email that has all of my contact information so that you can either email me, text me, snail mail me, or write on the card here while you're in church a question you have about Eucharist. Uh, it can be a theological question, it can be a practical question, anything that is uh, that you've always wondered, why do we do it that way? Or why don't we do it this way? Or what's that about? Just write it and, and, and then I'll build it around those. So these cards are, should be in the pew right in front of you. You can just uh, stick it in the um, alms box, the offering box out there before you leave. Your extra stack of cards right next to the register. Um, the next thing I want to say is that for several years now, um, Christian churches and churches of other faiths too, but Christian churches have worked into their liturgical year um, a, a season of creation. Uh, in this long season after Pentecost, what we have done, and this spans even churches that aren't typically thought of as, as honoring liturgical seasons, so most of them do now, have designated this time from September 1st through October 4th as the liturgical season of creation, nested within the traditional season after the day of Pentecost. Uh, it starts on September 1st because for years that has been a world day of prayer among Christians for um, the care of creation. It ends on October 4th because for Christians that is the Feast of St. Francis who draw, draws our attention to the whole of creation. The theme for this year is let justice and peace flow. And the reminder is that in creation, creation is about nature and the world around us, but we are a part of that. So creation is about us in nature and the need for justice and peace in the understanding of peace as shalom, as, as wholeness for all of us, with each other and with cre creation. So uh, in the weeks to come, we will switch booklets and our booklet will focus on uh, focus our attention on, on, on the creation and our place in it all around. Um, today, because it's Labor Day, it seemed like that aspect of uh, paying attention to justice and peace for each other was important, especially in how we look at labor. Uh, we think of Labor Day as summer vacation of being over, but what it really got started as was of those who labor, and it was related to labor unions and people that, that stood up uh, for the rights and the honor of labor. So on this Labor Day, let us offer this prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of the rough, worn hands, as we honor workers this day, let us not forget those whose work is without being held in honor. Those homemakers who watch over children at homes but are not recognized as workers because they are not paid. Those who are forced out of jobs by corporate changes. Those forced into early retirement. Those who are denied employment because of their age. Those who live far from home, struggling to save a bit of money to send to their loved ones. Those who must work illegally in order to survive. Those who lose jobs because employers use undocumented labor. Christ of the aching back, you worked the rough wood. You walked the long and dusty road. You know the bitter thirst of the poor. Let our thirst become a passion for justice. Help us to work toward transformation of economic policies that allow only a few nations to afford the world's wealth. Policies that pay women as only half a person or less. Policies that do not recognize the worth of labor exacted without pay. Spirit of creative power, move among us this day. Heal the wounds we carry because of jobs we hate but must do, jobs we want but cannot have. Heal all those who labor to survive. 
renew us and renew in us our sense of vocation. Help us to discern your presence in even the lowliest tasks we face. Amen. 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 Okay, shall we do this?
your Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people. And kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created. And, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read a portion of Psalm 26 responsibly at the aspen. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless. Nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord. That I may go in procession around your altar. Singing, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving. And recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell. And the place where your glory abides. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the deeds of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate, associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone for evil, evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with angels and glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. chime in, and if there's some reason that you can't, that's okay too. So I'm going to give this a shot. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to New York Kind of sad hearing that, isn't it? He was. He was a racist. I don't think he knew he was racist. You know any people like that? <laughs> yeah. We know people like that. Because folks like that also don't like people who are gay or trans or any of the things that we want folks to come here for so that they can feel accepted and have a place where they're comfortable worshiping. Now I'm going to redeem Woody Guthrie. <laughs> Woody Guthrie, when he was living in LA during the 40s and, and 50s, LA wasn't the same place in 1940 that it is now. No place in this country 
but it's the same as it is now. Woody Guthrie was from Oklahoma. Okima, Oklahoma. And uh, he was a product of his time. And I'm not excusing his behavior. I'm not excusing especially his language. Because he used derogatory language a lot. And then he got a letter from a young black man in L.A. who explained to Woody why it was painful to hear him say the things that he said about African Americans. And as far as I can tell, looking at the records, he never used any of that language again. So we know people can change, don't we? We know that under the right circumstances, people can change the way they think. And yet somehow or another in this country, I feel like we've given up on changing people. What's wrong with us? That we can't be out there hammering these negative thoughts and ideas and emotions and drive them out of this world. Because maybe it's not our job. Maybe it takes a lot more than what we're doing. Labor Day. My dad was a union man. And because my father was a union man, I grew up a union kid. And I don't know how many times. <laughs> Mom and I and the other kids would drive Dad to a picket line. Mom figured he was safe there. You see, Dad liked to drink a little bit. Sometimes he liked to drink a lot. And my mom probably figured it was hard for him to get in trouble in a picket line. But my mom didn't know picket lines. <laughs> There's a bunch of people, guys primarily, hanging out with picket signs and a half pint of whiskey in your back pocket. So in a way, it was a way for Dad to feel free to do what he really wanted to do, which was drink at that time, to find that clear. So I grew up understanding unions. I grew up understanding that because my father was a member of the Brotherhood of the Carpenters Union number 405 in Santa Clara County, he could be guaranteed a certain amount of money when he was on the job. He could get health benefits for his kids. The Carpenters Union was one of the first to accept Kaiser Permanente, big company on the West Coast, for health insurance, and that solved a lot of problems for us. But now we don't hear too much about labor unions. You know, in the early days of labor unions, you might go to a picket line and get shot by the police. It happened more than once. People were there saying, hey, we need safer working conditions. We need a higher wage so we can feed our kids. But the big business, now, they said bring the cops in with loaded guns and let's deal with it. And that happened quite a bit in the early years of, of unions in this country. First union, 1866. Bet you didn't know that. Quite honestly, neither did I until a couple of days ago. Now I know. It's good for me to know the history of who I am as a member of this society, as a member of my family. And I am still a union guy. Now, I'm not a union guy because I like my TV shows. And I want the writers to start back writing again. And the actors acting and TV TV. I mean, I like all those things. 
But you know, in terms of what the unions went through in the early years, it's not the same. Those actors and writers and all of them are not likely to get shot. But it was a very likely thing in the early days of unions. And my dad wouldn't cross a picket line. It didn't matter who was picketing. And even after my dad was gone, I wouldn't cross a picket line. I just couldn't do it. Too much of my father's heart was in that. And when he talked about the union, he talked with his heart about the union about how important it was. How important it was to be able to demonstrate for a thing that's necessary to the life of your child. They're having more fun than we Now, if you were a carpenter before, uh, before unions, you'd get paid whatever they wanted to pay you. How many of you remember the, the movie The Grapes Are Out? I've, I've preached a little on this before. Do you remember who Tom Jones was in the movie? John, who was, who was Tom Jones? Tom Jones was the main character in the movie Grapes of Wrath. Now, the Grapes of Wrath, the old trucks trying to make it over the mountains, that was part of the movie. I'm dating myself talking about this movie because it was made in the 1930s, I believe. Tom Joad was every man in my family. They all came through Colorado, California, because they thought they were going to find the land of milk and honey. That's not what they found. People from Oklahoma that landed in California were the first migrant farm workers in the state. Some folks would have considered them alien. But the big companies had bought up all the farms in the San Joaquin Valley, and that's where folks tended to settle, was in the San Joaquin Valley. So the big companies didn't want people share cropping. They didn't want to share their crops. They didn't mind having a bunch of poor Oklahoma folks picking cotton and corn and everything else, fruit. Shoot, when I was a kid, I'd spend time with my grandparents in those fruit, orchard, uh, fruit orchards in the San Joaquin Valley, and I thought it was wonderful. But I didn't have to pick those doggone oranges, somebody else did. And they didn't get paid much for it. Not much at all. They were migrant farm workers. Most of them lived in little colonies outside of the main city of Porterville. If you've ever been to Porterville, Porterville ain't Maine about anything. Porterville is just a little town on the edge of the San Joaquin Valley. But the reason I'm telling you this story is Tom Joe says it better than I can. He's talking to his mom. He's about to head out. Trying to figure out what's going on with his world. So what he says. Then it don't matter. I'll be around in the dark. I'll be everywhere. Wherever you can look. Wherever there's a fight so hungry people can eat. I'll be there. Wherever there's a cop beating up a guy. I'll be there. I'll be in the way guys yell when they're mad. I'll be in the way kids laugh when they're hungry. 
in the no supper division. And when the people are eating the stuff they raise and living in the houses they build, I'll be there too. Tom Job is just a character in a book by John Steinbeck. He wasn't real. But this is the only monologue in any movie that I've ever studied as closely as I've studied this. And Tom Job says it well, because these things are still going on. There's babies starving in this community that we don't know about. And there's likely to be somebody getting beat up by a policeman here in, in Knoxville. Because we know what happens all over. So what do we do? Genuine love. That's what Paul talked about in Romans. Genuine love is a willful attitude and commitment to the growth and well-being of oneself and another. It is intimacy that is achieved only when you have faced your fears, address your personal issues, and come to know and love yourself. It's an expression of who you are without expectations for others to do or be anything other than themselves. This does not mean that we live forever in peace and harmony and never argue about the dishes or laundry. Being committed to the growth and well-being of another involves conflict, negotiation, and exploring who we both are in a relationship or going about our daily lives. Now, I don't expect you to remember any of that. But sometimes Paul says things, and I really have to follow up. But I need you to know what genuine love, according to Paul, is. I think I know genuine love. I feel genuine love here. And I know I feel genuine love from them kids. Because they don't know any better, do they? They're just kids. And they just about love everybody, don't they? Yeah. I love having kids around here. I really do. Christ lays it out for us. If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. What is your cross? Is your cross the people in this community? Is your cross some other community? Yeah, we're talking about carrying on what Christ wants us to do. Now it's easy for me to stand up here and tell y'all what you should do. And maybe it's something we need to want to do. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me and express an expression of faith according to the Nicene Creed on page two of your book. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, beyond and not made, of one being with the Father, that we in all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He came in part for a Jewish Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and not just He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, and the Lord's scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We will believe the Holy Spirit, and the Lord, the giver of life, who will see us on the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Amen. Where is the people are on the same page, page three, in your insert? <coughs> Please feel free to respond to the prayers as we go through. Gracious God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. For this parish of St. Luke's, especially for our children and their leaders. St. Mary, Mary. And this for you. God of power and might, enliven the church for her mission. That, that we may be salt of the earth and light of the world. May we have the eyes to see and ears to hear our mission in this place. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in the word and action. <laughs> Pray for the world. God, creator of all, lead us and every people into the ways of justice and peace. And that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for community. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. And all we ask to protect and encourage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. <coughs> May we serve Christ in one another and love as he does. We pray for those in need. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May we handle the healing power of the world. <laughs> Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in the making people whole. We pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Father, into your hands, Mike, Cameron, Cameron. Beverly, Tracy Kramer, Mary Harvey, give comfort to those who mourn. Bring peace in the time of loss. Wes, Nathan, <coughs> Robert, all, all the victims of violence, mm -hmm. man made and women. 
We praise you for all your saints. God of light and joy, teach and encourage us also. May we too trust in your love, serve your purpose, and praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord.
drunk to give God thanks and praise. It is good and joyful that in your presence we give you thanks, holy God, for you have included us in creation and made us in your glorious image. You have remembered us from our beginning and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you punish us and call us the fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with all the company, all the faithful in every generation, we give voice to all creation as we
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your